to discover that you have some gay tendencies is a fine thing mm. because then you don't have to be so confused. Right. Do you feel less confused? Mm. Do you? Yeah. That's the voice of Father Robert DeLand, now serving time in a Michigan prison for multiple counts of homosexual assault. Church Militant obtained these police audio recordings of DeLand attempting to groom and seduce a teenage boy, trying to convince him he's gay. Hello, I'm Michael Voris. Welcome to this Church Militant special report. We're bringing you to give you a first-of-its-kind look into the twisted mind and methods of a homo-predator priest. So do you feel less confused about it? I mean, mm. I mean, is it okay for you to say, you know what, I definitely got some gay in me. Mm. Think that's good to say that? Mm. Yeah. Say it. Not quite ready to say it, but... What you're going to hear in this report is deeply disturbing. The voice of a priest ordained to save souls using his spiritual authority to destroy. But keep in mind, this very thing has happened thousands and thousands of times as hurting or confused teenage boys are lured into a world of darkness by homo predator priests. It's just that we don't have police recordings of all of them. This time, we do. Do you ever masturbate? And not have to go online. Yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. And then where do your thoughts go? I don't know. I just kind of let my thoughts go wherever they want to. And like, what do you find? I mean, do you find that they mainly go to do they mainly go to guys? It's something too many bishops don't want you to face or want you to think about the actual truth of what goes on when a sick priest sets his sights on a younger male and begins the process of grooming him preparing to seduce him. Despite attempts by leaders like Chicago's Cardinal Blaise Supich to deflect from this manifest evil by falsely appealing to consensual sex or sex involving two adults, the truth is all of it is a massive, massive abuse of trust and authority which bishops don't want to address in any substantive manner. Likewise, they also want to totally deflect from the issue of homosexuality and pretend it has nothing to do with the problem. However, in spite of the game playing, the 2004 John Jay report and every single survey issued by the bishops since then show 80% of all clergy abuse victims are male and around that same number are postpubescent, meaning physically mature teenage boys. The John Jay Report acknowledges this disparity, saying in its 2011 report, quote, National incidence studies have consistently shown that, in general, girls are three times more likely to be abused than boys. Despite this widely accepted statistic on victim gender, recent studies of sexual abuse of minors within institutions have shown a higher percentage of male than female victims. The Ruth Institute published a groundbreaking report last year by sociologist Father Paul Sullins showing a near 100% correlation between the rise in the number of gay priests and the rise in the number of clergy sex abuse cases. Comparing priests reporting a homosexual orientation with the incidence of sex abuse from the years 1955 to 1999, we see an almost perfect correlation between the rise in self-identified homosexual clergy and the rise in abuse. The figure proves this is not a pedophile problem. This is a pederast problem, meaning a homosexual problem, the problem of homosexual predation on male teens. I love you. I love you. I know. What are we going to do? I don't know. <laughs> no, what are we going to do, really? Father Robert DeLand was a priest of more than 40 years in the Diocese of Saginaw, Michigan, former judicial vicar and senior priest on the marriage tribunal. Enormously popular among local Catholics, Catholics who defended DeLand even as the news was beginning to dominate local media outlets. The land is now serving two to 15 years in Jackson State Prison, largely as a result of the sting operation that caught him grooming this male teenage victim, offering him cash and drugs, and then attempting to sexually assault him. The 17-year-old victim who testified in court during preliminary hearings was, 
at the time of Deland's grooming, grieving the suicide of one of his best friends. The victim had gotten in trouble with the law for underage drinking and was sentenced to community service. Deland had worked his way into being a hallway monitor at Freeland High School and was popular among students. He used his work at the school as cover, hunting for male teenage victims. It was here in 2017 that he singled the boy out, taking him under his wing. It started with the land offering to pay for his grief counseling sessions, and then suggesting that he complete his community service hours at his condo, where the priest could get him alone. His parents, alarmed by the priests latching on to their son, went to the police, who launched a secret investigation, wiring the victim so he could record his interactions with the land. And then I knew that I had to use audio. I knew that was going to be paramount. Who's going to believe a detective, a one-person detective unit from a small podunk police department mm -hmm. over Father Bob, okay, and the Catholic Church? So I know that I had to get very incriminating audio on him. One of the tactics is to draw victims in on secret associations, emotionally or psychologically isolating them. In this case, what they did is they, he allowed the victim to uh, smoke cigarettes, knowing that his parents didn't want him to smoke cigarettes, mm -hmm. okay? And then they'll start with the alcohol, same thing in this case give them some alcohol, and then they move to drugs, okay? So there's a, a strategy that all sexual predators use. Berg made clear the priest had other victims and that he used homosexuality as his means of setting up his assaults. Uh, going back 33 years, and I'm, I, I'm going off memory, but there was either three to four, maybe even five suicides that may have been attributed to the land. From Over the years. victims of From this. victims, yeah. We played the police audio recordings for Liz Yore, a child victims advocate for years. You know, this conversation reminds me of many predators where they introduce um, not only to young boys um, that they're interested in gay sex, that they may be gay. I see that you may have gay tendencies. It's fine. It's just fine. It's who you are. If it's how God made you, Big deal, right? After the victim pretended to struggle with same-sex attraction, Deland's conversations turned almost obsessively to the topic, encouraging him to experiment with partners. I mean, did you have any curiosity about doing it for real? Yeah. Well, I think you ought to try to find somebody. Yeah, I think you can. Well, there's certainly guys right around school. I don't know if you're attracted to them. Are you attracted to anybody at school? No. Nobody, huh? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you found yourself attracted to other guy? I think you would know how to investigate. Yeah. You know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Look, if you're gay, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that there's some gayness in there. And you know what? I love you as you are. And so if you're gay, you're gay. Mm -hmm. Bring, me, bring home a boyfriend, I'm going to love him just like I love you. Even using religion to reinforce the young man's supposed homosexuality. Say a prayer with me. Right. Lord, I really ask you to ease the burdens of even even to ask care. But Lord, he's such a good person. You made him so good. And I want him to believe that. And I don't know that he does. Conversations pushed him toward gay sex, and as Detective Berg noted, the priest encouraged him to watch gay porn, masturbate, and call up the priest the next day to tell him all about it. Showing gay porn is another way that they use it, introducing it in discussions, in conversation, to lower the inhibitions of the child, to become a partner in complicit in quote unquote gay sex. Can you try it for me tonight and let's see what happens? Mm -hmm. and then just add, in fact, after you're done with it, I want you to get a hold of me and tell me how you're feeling. All right. That'd be good? Yeah. Deland would ask the teen intimate questions about his sexual leanings. Would you see yourself doing 
anal sex, or would you see yourself sucking? I think we've arrived at the moment when it's time to find that out. All while lavishing on him attention and over-the-top displays of love and affection, the sort of affection a troubled teen might crave. I really love you. I mean, I, 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 I really do. Love you, Buzz Bob. Yeah, I, I, I really do feel that from you. You're promising me that you're going to try to take more advantage of me. Yeah. I love you. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Thank you, Buzz Bob. No, I mean, you really are. You, um know that the older you get, the more good-looking you get. I'm sure <laughs> people tell you that. I've ever heard that before, actually. Really? Yeah. Hmm. But it's really true. A good-looking man. I want you to believe it with all your heart that you're just a good man who's just troubled right now. Mm -hmm. But we can get you through this. What do we call each other? Hmm? Well, I mean... It's more than a friendship. Mm -hmm. What is it? I don't know. Much more than a friendship, isn't it? Something so deep, so good. Mm -hmm. When you think of a priest talking to a minor about, you know, and encouraging him to pursue these quote unquote tendencies, um, and when in fact this priest is only interested in his own selfish exploitation of this child. The land even resorted to using the suicide of the victim's friend, Michael Dennis, in an attempt to become sexually intimate with the boy. It's kind of interesting how you and I came together. Yeah, Michael did a good thing in bringing us together, didn't he? It's worth noting that Michael Dennis was close to Father DeLand and spent a great deal of time with the homo predator priest just before turning a gun on himself. This was more alarming because of the facade he was putting on. You know, mm -hmm. wearing the collar and I love the kids and you can trust me. And then, and then parents actually entrusting their children to him. We're gonna get you drunk and we're gonna cry. Yep. <laughs> that sound good? Yeah. Even offering to buy him the drug ecstasy. Are we getting them for just me or you or? I'm sorry, what are we getting? Uh, the ecstasy. Oh. <laughs> No, 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 I'm watching you. Is that okay? My gosh, that's a pretty hard drug, and I really want you to be doing that on your own. Right. You know, sitting at home or something. It was this drug the victim pretended to be high on on the night of February 25th, 2018, that led to DeLand making his move. <laughs> yes, you're tripping away, boy. You know. That's good. You having fun? Yeah. Good. I'm glad it's working. <laughs> You're so high. <laughs> giving him a back rub in his bedroom before attempting to sexually assault him, causing the victim to flee the condo to safety and leading to Father DeLand's immediate arrest. So weird. I'm starting to shake. Hey, you did a good job. Yeah, he kept rubbing my ass and my hand was kind of near my crotch. He started rubbing my hand on top of my crotch. It was... Mm -hmm. Self-policing doesn't work. It never has worked. We've seen that in the MSU case. We see it in college cases all the time where the police department, the police officers work for the college, okay? So mm -hmm. they're not going to do an impartial investigation right. against one of their faculty members or such. And then we see it in the Catholic Church mm -hmm. and here in Saginaw. So you see the cover-up, uh, the blatant lies, and that's why the audio is so important. Right. It is the most grievous form of child exploitation, um, a violation of their faith. This is why when victims of clergy abuse, not only have they lost their innocence, but they've lost their faith. And that conversation perfectly highlights 
why it is such a hideous and vile um, crime against children. Um, and there it is. And it happens all the time. The case of Father DeLand can be multiplied many times over with many thousands more victims groomed by homosexual predators like DeLand who target vulnerable young men, lavish them with affection and attention, offer them gifts, and push them to experiment with homosexuality, taking sexual advantage of them. Thousands of young men used and abused and left scarred for life. Others unable to cope, committing suicide, all while bishops continue to ignore the specific crisis of homosexuals in the clergy as well as within their own ranks. They minimize the harms, excusing and rationalizing gay priests, blaming clericalism or access or any number of canards, rather than focus on the actual problem of deeply disturbed and twisted men in their own clerical ranks. They sit silent and in some cases even support Men like Father James Martin's parading of homosexuality is perfectly normal. Until the bishops start confronting this problem head on, many more Father DeLands will continue to groom and abuse many more male victims, leading to more ruined lives, loss of faith on a massive scale, loss of trust from the laity, and a church crippled by a crisis the bishops refuse to name. Reporting for Church Militant, I'm Michael Voris. God love you.